ladies and gentlemen, Happy New Year to you. I'd say Happy New Year, and John, I'm loving your hat. Thank you. I am too. I'm Who's Peggy Burton, by the way. And I'm Jim Fuller. It's good to be back. Always <laughs> wanted a bowler. Well, you and just look fine in a bowler. You. I think thank you were you. born to wear a bowler. Uh, I can't, I've, now I've got a hat where I can be uh, Sherlock Holmes, or I can be, if I want to be Watson, I can there wear this. There you go. This. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. It's really cool. I and like John it. John wears it well. Yes, know. he does. Thank you. I mean, he kind of just looks like he needs a bowler. Right, yeah. Well, you know, every now and then you do. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in, in this society, which is the most casual that society's probably ever, ever been, been. Oh, yeah. since we crawled out of a cave. I know. That there is <laughs> still a need to understand style and appropriate dress. Right. Because sooner or later, all these, all these greasy pants and elf shoes and torn up clothes are going to go out of style. And underwear showing. Underwear showing. <laughs> yeah. And the guy who knows how to wear a real suit and, and be dressed appropriately is still the one that's it's in still, control. It, uh, right. All it, through all of this. Frankly, I think he's you still getting the job. <laughs> in control and they know how to dress because there are times that you have to dress appropriately to achieve some of the things you want to achieve. Yeah. Possibly. It's interesting Possibly. you say Possibly, that. that's always true, but not always true. It's interesting you say the torn up clothes because they're quite expensive. You know, I know, right? to get and your I, 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 and, and, jeans. Yeah, and we're all old enough that we can remember when that was, you wore those kind of things because you had to. And people felt sorry yeah, for you. Yeah, you only had to. So many good uh, Sunday clothes exactly. or, or school well, they, clothes. They had it. holes in them because you worked holes in them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, right. I'm just thinking back to church when I was a teenager and uh -huh. at home going to church. <clears throat> People dressed up. Women wore hats. They wore gloves. They matched usually. They took the time to dress. And, you know, it, and that, men wore suits. You, you mentioned that my my grandparents were not by any means. My granddaddy was a pipe fitter and my grandmother kept children and ironed. But yet I see pictures of them going to church and Dressed she is up. wearing a wool suit, gloves and a hat, and he's wearing a three-piece suit and a, and a boil shirt and a tie and a hat. And everybody could afford to buy nice clothes. They weren't so expensive. Now, fine clothes are very, very, oh, yeah. very, yeah. very expensive. You're looking at a thousand dollars. Yeah, or but something. these were just regular working people, and they were they were afforded the ability to uh, to dress properly. What was proper at the at the time? At the time. Right. Yeah. But that's when everybody lived in Mayberry. And, and <laughs> right. <laughs> well, the guy who fixed your radio was just as valuable a member of, of the society and should as, be. as and the that, banker. And should be. You know, but it's, it's, uh, things aren't like that quite so much anymore. By the way, I'm not putting down anybody who wears the jeans. That no, have been nor am I. Worn and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, what's in buy, style. Because that's in style. Because sure. everybody in my family probably it's got some of them. Right. You know, so. I can remember working at Clyde Phillips when I was young, and on Fridays, guys would come into Clyde Phillips, and if they were had a date that weekend, come in and get a new pair of pants and a shirt, because you could buy a pair of khakis. Yeah. With, I say khaki, the cotton cotton chinos is Whatever, what they call yeah. them, but yeah. you know, you could get one in black or brown or tan or blue And they or look green. really nice, yeah. And for five bucks. Yeah. And a shirt was 250 But five bucks back then in my house was a lot of money. I mean, maybe not when you were young, though. It, uh, it sounds like it's inexpensive, but at that time... Well, gas was 27 cents a gallon. Yeah, right. right, everything was less. <laughs> yeah, sure, but still... It was it was not not outrageous a hundred dollar bill or a hundred and fifty dollars to get a pair of pants. Yeah. 
You know, those blue jeans you're talking about, some of them are 150, 200. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're not cheap. They're, and they're, then they got holes all in them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, know year. I, I confess I don't get it, <laughs> but it's okay. You know, it, uh, yeah, it's just the style. Yeah. That's right. So, New Year's resolution. Did y'all make a resolution? Well, yeah, I make the same one every year. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Yeah, and so, me too. So, you know, I try real me hard. Too. and. Uh, <laughs> Times, I, times. You know, I, I won't buy any clothes because I need to lose the weight. And it's a did challenge. You, it gets uh, harder every year. And, and did you guys stay up till New Year's? I did. Yeah, I definitely. saw New Year's in New York and New Year's in Nashville. I watched both. I saw the New York one, and I didn't quite make it to the one that <laughs> one in Nashville. I, I, I just was said, close. I just said, I'm going to see this through. Minutes, well, and then I watched one that I didn't, that never ended, that was the Molly Cyrus one. Uh -huh. And I have to say that Molly has cleaned up her act and did a good job. What kind of malfunction? I read something about, did her top fall off or almost fall off? Well, I guess I missed that. They were talking about she had some kind of malfunction yeah. and she ended up holding her clothes on her, her front yeah. and turning her back to the audience and finishing the song and then going off stage and coming back as the band was vamping, waiting yeah. on her in, in the, a jacket. Yeah. Well, I didn't see that part. I'm sorry I missed that. But said she but handled I, it very well. She yeah. is, uh, she really actually had some really good songs. She's talented. Yeah, she's very who, talented. Who was it on CNN, I guess, that was drunk and they, <laughs> Andy Cohen. And oh, yeah. And he, they even ask him not to come back. I, I didn't see it. I don't know what happened. Cohen, did he get drunk? Well, Probably. he and Anderson Cooper, Anderson Cooper doesn't drink normally except on New Year's Eve. Yeah. But yeah, that's kind of been a thing the last few years is that Anderson Cooper and Andy Cohen get pretty wasted. Had, had a few drinks. They get to doing shots, you know. And all those CNN people who are so straight during the year, uh, you know, they're in different locations, but they're all about half. <laughs> you know, having a good time, you know, so. Uh, I wonder I, if things get said that they really want to say that they don't say during the rest of the year. It's possible. You have to be careful about that kind of thing if you're going to drink and be able to do television, oh, yeah. you know. So, yeah, well, particularly on one of those, those uh, uh, scripted news shows. Oh, yeah. Because whoever's writing the check is, is telling you even what to say. And yeah, you, and you better all say of a sudden it. You go off script and say something that Mr. Big Bucks uh, man doesn't like. Of New, Year, gone. Of New Year's Eve is not really like that, though. It's, it, they're totally different than you normally see them. Uh -huh. It's not scripted, I don't think. And uh, I guarantee you. I mean, they're not, they're not talking about anything serious either. I mean, they're just talking about <laughs> like party. Well, yeah, yeah, they're just trying to get through it. <clears throat> Make yeah. a dollar. Yeah, and they're having a good time. Andy Cohen is not a news guy, so yeah, he's he was unleashed pretty good. Yeah, that night, so, <laughs> so. we we used to have a couple that, that worked with us that would get a little bit wide open. <laughs> I, we did, and uh, and it was it was okay. Sure. Uh, I, although I've been accused of that myself. And that was guilt by association right. because I was really not drunk. Yeah, I know. I just happened to be working with somebody that might have been. And, you know. I, you know, I spent a lot of times pretending I was one thing instead of another. Sure. I, you can do that. Sure you can. And I, it, it's a stage. Because I remember somebody asking me what I was on. Yeah. I, I was just on life, if that makes oh, somebody, any sense. Somebody <laughs> quizzed me about Fuller one time and said he was drunk said, I'll never watch what y'all do again. Fuller was drunk, it was just ridiculous. And I said, Fuller hadn't had a drink. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, he had, I know he had. And I said, well, no, I was standing right know. side uh -huh. beside him all night long. And I'm telling you, he didn't. You got him mixed up with that other guy that happened to be up there with us. Because, you know, for the record, you can have a good time without being drunk. Sure. I mean, sure. So it's not that big but a deal. When we used to do that telethon, there was a whole lot of people doing a whole lot of drinking. <laughs> So some of them would was, be a little bit loose. And, and, and to tell you the truth, you know, most of them were volunteers. Oh, well, yeah. And, and, and guests and, who were paying and, to who, be there. Yeah, they paid to be there and then gave yeah. them a lot of money. So that was how we have fun. Yeah, have fun. They that paid was, to have that fun. That was the deal. So, you know. <clears throat> well, 
So I, I made, so my, what's your, I made your, my New Year's resolution, my normal one. I'm giving up Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is my other. This is my other. This is you're, my. You're, I mean, I can't believe you put yourself through that, John. No, it. no Brussels sprouts. No, no Brussels sprouts. No Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to stand it. <laughs> no, it. I don't either. I'll be clawing at the, I'll be clawing at the vegetable <laughs> aisle at, at the grocery store, waiting for a new shipment. There but, you go. Yeah. Success rewards persistence. So forward, O oh ye, still tracking that elusive dream. Forward. So success rewards persistence. That's what I, how you get success and rewards. You keep knocking on the door. If you keep don't keep, keep moving going. forward. And then these are a couple of these are a couple other things. The, the moon reminds me of love's first kiss. The warmth of the sun I miss. Cheese whose holes are surrounded by flavor that my taste buds refuse to savor. Without a mellow Merlot historically stored, properly corked and liberally poured, a spicy mustard slathered on with my knife then wiped on the table linen to the horror of my wife. <laughs> then I stick it back in my boot. <laughs> <laughs> Your nice clean knife. <laughs> on her no. Yeah, it's clean oh, yeah. to the tablecloth. <laughs> right. And then this is one for all of us. Often I feel like I've been left behind, still standing in the back of the line. The glow up ahead seems brighter than bright, but I don't quit. I continue to fight, and I let my little light shine. Hold my head up, embrace the grind, hone on my craft time after time, polish and love till they'd have to be blind not to see my little light shine. The business has problems seeing past its debt, so those holding favor are the ones that get. Millions are left out that need so much. I work for them, and I hope that they're touched when I let my little light shine. Hold up in, in place, held up in place, in a place they can't help but find. The craft I've honed time after time, polished with love, till they would have to be blind not to see my little light shine. Don't do it for fortune. Don't do it for fame. But for those on the porch in search of a flame. So I let my little light shine, hold up my head, embrace the grind, hone on my craft time after time, polish with love till they'd have to be blind not to see my little light shine. Happy New Year. Good. That, that's very nice. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody needs to shine their light. Yeah. And and don't depend on anybody else to do it to for do it you. For and you don't because depend they're not on anybody else to define your happiness. Exactly. You're the only one. A friend of ours, Donna Priestmeyer, uh, wrote something recently, and it was about she, at times in her life, had lost joy. And she said, you really don't understand until you've lost the joy in your life, what it means when you, and you find it again. Right. Joy is something that, that, that is a human right. You can't let anybody I, I, take the joy out of your life. You're the only one who right. can let them do that. And don't, don't let them do that. I do think that the holidays bring a lot of sadness oh, to a lot they of do. people. They do. And uh, I think you have to work your way through it. Yeah. You have to sometimes go into crowds or into social events where you really rather be left alone and crawl into a hole and cover up your head. Yeah. But it's best, in my opinion, that you move into, I, I agree. just keep moving, just keep moving. Smile, and if you feel like crying, try to smile. You know? Yeah, and you don't need, remember, I heard somebody say this, and I thought it was really, really good. You don't need permission to seek refuge. That's true. You don't need permission to feel joy. It's, it's, it's yours to decide. No one can take that away from you unless you let them. 
And if you need to rest, go rest. True. You know, you're no good if you're so worn out, you're you can't be good for and yourself. And you're lucky if you have time to go do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the thing. That's hey, it. we have some great stuff on the show today. Yesterday, I was at the... Uh, at the high school at noon when they, when they made coaches. the announcement about the new coach, head football coach at Tullahoma High School, and that's Corey Sisk, or Coy Sisk. I want to say Corey. It's not Corey. It's yeah. Coy right. Sisk. And uh, everybody was tickled, and we were there. Good. That's and great. And we'll have some video about that and some other things. And you said Henry Cho is going to be at <laughs> South Jackson On the week 14th, from Saturday. Friday. Friday. Friday the Friday. 14th. I believe it's 7 o'clock, and the tickets are available. Civic Center is open during the week from 10 until 5, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. So that's a good time to get tickets or go online. They're always there. Okay. Get them sent through the mail. All right, Henry. so what we'll do right now is take a quick break and be back with the rest of today's show. The Bookshelf in Tullahoma is the fundraising arm of the Coffee County Literacy Council. Since 1988, the Literacy Council's goal and purpose has been to support and promote adult basic education in Coffee County. We enable individuals to complete their high school equivalency exam, which helps them get better jobs or continue into higher education. The Bookshelf at 114 Southwest Atlantic Street in Tullahoma is where we sell used books, which are donated to us by the community. Come see us, bring your books to donate, and join us as you find every genre of books that you can imagine. MacArthur Manor Assisted Living is passionate about creating better experiences for our Manchester seniors. Our residents describe us in a few words. Welcoming. When you walk through the doors at MacArthur Manor, we'll treat you like family. Caring. Through high standards of personalized care, we help residents live life to its fullest. Engaging. With a wide range of life-enriching activities, there is something for everyone at MacArthur Manor. With our residents and staff now vaccinated, call us today to schedule your safe and personalized tour. I had a knee replacement, so they have got me in life care, which I'm very, very thankful for. I couldn't garden, I couldn't do my flower beds, I can't chase my little dogs. I have been in several therapy sessions for knees and back, and that's the best therapist I believe I've ever been to. It's tremendous because I'm able to walk again, but if it wasn't for the care, I wouldn't be where I am. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit Tullahoma and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. The individuals with dementia, those with Parkinson's, those that have maybe mobility issues, need caregivers. Well, those caregivers are 24 hours a day at home, and they never get a rest. And if they have to go to work, they're kind of out of luck. So that's why Trinity came into existence 25 years ago, to allow the caregivers to have a safe center where they could put their loved ones, know they would be well cared for, stimulated, fed good nutritious meals, have activities to their level, and then the caregiver can stop by and pick them up and go on home and have some continuity into their life. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. All right, folks, we're back, and as I t uh, said earlier, we, we have a new Tillam High School football coach, right. Jimmy, it's, it's uh, Coy Sisk, and I went over there uh, yesterday, and, you know, in, you'll see in the speech where uh, they were talking about there was as many as 30 applications from 
all over the Mid-South mm -hmm. to come to Tullahoma right. and get this job. Now, you know, you think about it, and, and we were just talking, John Olive was the Titans High School Football Coach of the Year. Right. And he, was honored at halftime this past Sunday. Right. And uh, you're, it, 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 un unbelievable what that program has risen to in the last few years. Well, and, and when, you go, when you go to a football game to, to play in, this, in a championship game and you bring 10, 12,000 people down to the stands, people know about it not just all over the state, but all over, at least all over the Mid-South and all over the country. Right. The kind of support, and there was a lot of, there was a lot of talk yesterday about, about the support of the community for the programs in Tullahoma. Yeah. And that's <clears throat> that's not just the sports programs, that's the band, that's the singers. That's this this is a rare community. Yeah. And people wanted to be here. Up to thirty applicants for a coaching that's a high a, school that, that's coaching job. Yeah. You know, and, and a lot of people don't don't realize, I mean they make decent money, but they're not making the, the big bucks that you oh, no. may associate w with college. These guys are working a lot of hours doing that, and they're also teaching a class, and uh, most of them are. Sure, and, sure, uh, they get teacher's so, pay so, because they're a teacher. Of, yeah, you have to and, be a teacher. Yeah, and a little bit of supplement, I think. For, and, and that supplement is probably I doubt it's I doubt it's fifty cents an hour when you on a yearly basis. Yeah, right. By the after the time you think of the time that, that, that these guys put in on the road, they're going they're going there traveling to scout. And and I'm talking basically about football, but it's basketball, it's baseball, it's all of it. Yeah. But they're going to scout, they're going to see when they're not playing on a on a night. Either one of the coaches or somebody, even if they are playing, is over at the other town <laughs> where the next ball game might be or the next team that we're right. playing. They're scouting. They're watching film all night long. And I hugged Cherie Olive yesterday because John's success is not just John's success. It's a family success. Sure, because John Olive had, to, as all high school coaches do, particularly John, he's passionate about that. But, but uh, you know, his family sacrifices because he does that. Fortunately, at the end, John's three months, yeah, four months, yeah. Because you know, John, of course, does the John coach John Olive did the the show here on the uh, right Charter One Ninety Three for you. 30 years. Right. And uh, you see him in the morning at 9 o'clock, as John and I have many, many times. But uh, when John came in, he's coached the game the night before. It might have been an away game, and he drove two hours uh, to get, get home. home. But John has already been to the field house and watched that film and made notes on the previous, not for our show, but for future reference for him. He wants to look at that stuff. When it's fresh on his mind, right? You know? But he, but he, and he told Corey, and, and I talked to Coy. I talked with him yesterday about what we were going to do going forward into the future, and he's he he wants to keep doing the show, right? And uh, and John said he told him he said it's not you you're not being paid to do that show. You know, and we we have we have given. John uh, a stipend right. to come here. He doesn't come over here and do this for nothing because he doesn't have to stay up two hours after a ball game right. or get up two hours early unless he's coming over here at nine o'clock to do this show. Right. Because he wants to be able to know which kid made the tackle and which kid did this and 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 so it's part, it's part of it. Sure. And uh we appreciate what John has done in so many ways throughout this community over the past 30 years. And to see the passion that was in that gym yesterday, and there were a lot of people in that gym. There were a lot of families there. There were a lot of kids there. 
a little lot of sponsors there to see the passion that they all had for Coy and how proud they were and excited that he was the choice. It was, it was like, it wasn't, it was a handing that torch over with a hug. Yeah, and for and somebody you, and, that you that, that John respects as well. Right. Yeah, keep in mind John is athletic director, so he had a lot to say about. Uh, I'm who, sure who, he had who, who his successor was, and, and and you're exactly right about that. Though, wow, what a great thing that there's there's a, a lot of support for Coy Sisk in this community within the coaching uh, staff that we have now. That I assume most of them will be retained or will come back, and uh, you know, so it, it, it's it's usually these things could, could be controversial, but there there was a general. The decision makers made the right decision, yeah, yeah, exactly. and there are times in small towns when decisions get made where they feel like those they being those in power feel like they've got to go outside right. and bring somebody in because nobody here is good enough. Well, you know. The kids and the families who have worked, and John, who have worked with Coy for years, right. claimed him. And I'm glad that the decision makers listened. Yeah, and in case you don't know, Coy's been with the, uh, of course, has been with the program since 2014, I think. Yeah. Was defensive coordinator last year. Right, that right. So, and he so. was when John when John had to step away and do something because of his family, <clears throat> or go somewhere and do do something else because he's an athletic director. Right. Coy was his go-to guy. Right. These kids and these other coaches, he's their go-to guy. And what do you want to do? Do you want to break that up and? Do away with that in two or three years from now, look at all this wonderful coaching staff we have on the other side of the field right. with another team's outfit on? Right. I don't think so. Right. So uh, it was a great day. Yes, it was. It was a great yes, day. And what we'll do right now is we'll go to some film and let you see just how good it was.
Over the 100-year history of Tullahoma High School, three principles have long laid the foundation of its mission. Character, integrity, and leadership. These ideals have become the standard by which we are known and are the expectation of every program that represents our school. Therefore, these attributes were critical considerations in the selection of the coach that will lead our program into the next 100 years. Other considerations for the head coach were connected to the creation of meaningful relationships with players and coaches that would allow for life-changing lessons off the field to become permeated into the development of excellent young men well beyond their high school careers. The ability to create and nurture relationships with other faculty members, program shareholders, and the community was also a prime consideration. Next, demonstrated success on the field of competition was an obvious selection criteria for the next head coach. The individual must fully be able to meet the coaching prowess necessary to compete at the highest levels and have the ability to lead a talented staff of coaches as the game is being taught to our young men. During this process, I was provided meaningful assistance from our athletic director, John Olive, and our director of schools, Dr. Katrine Stevens, as the effort to identify the right candidate was immense. Furthermore, I sought input on the characteristics of the ideal candidate from other shareholders in the program, including members of the football team, parents, and our committed alumni base. With this valuable feedback, the effort began. The search for the next head coach at THS created much interest from within the coaching ranks in the state of Tennessee and others in the southeast. Over 30 resumes from coaches with both high school and college coaching experience were received during the process. Additionally, several conversations with interested coaches throughout the state were held to provide additional information on the opportunity and to determine if it was the right fit for our program. However, through all the applications, emails, conversations and interviews, there was one man whose stock appreciated considerably and who rose to the top to surpass all others. He is undoubtedly the best qualified person to lead our football program. It is with great pride that I introduce to you the next head coach at Tullahoma High School, Coy Sis. Coach Sisk and his side of the staff did was incredible. 
as we ended up giving up an average of eight points a game in 15 games, which was even better than surround himself with coaches that are very capable. He's learned to listen, uh, to absorb, and to put together the best game plans he can put together. You guys sitting right up there, you know for the last couple of years that there are many days he has been your head coach. Because there are days that I'm not present. There are days that AD would take me away. But he would be there in the off season with you. He was there in spring practice. He was there uh, every practice in the fall of the year as long as uh, COVID stayed away from us. And uh, I'm just telling you, he's ready. He's ready to go into a new era here at Tallahoma. I look forward to hopefully being somebody sitting up in those bleachers, uh, maybe wiping gruel off my face from my lunch. <laughs> finally replacing Coy, hopefully a couple of decades down the road. Uh, I have nothing but admiration for my great friend. And as I've said all along, what makes him the most special? His heart. Those guys up there know that he has a heart for each one of them. He knows how to reach them, whether they come from the finest social family in Tullahoma or where they come from, somebody who doesn't know where they're going to lay their head down tonight. He has that unique ability to reach that young man and to help them get to that next level as a person, that next level as a player. And I'm not talking about college ball or anything. I'm just talking about the growth of young men. And Coy, I wish you the best. And uh, I have some papers that you need to pick up in Germany. You're not a head football coach, Coy. So.
anybody that stands here that says they can do it by yourself, uh, well, for lack of a better word, they're a fool. <laughs> so, uh, as we go through this, I, we're very excited. Uh, Coach Olive has spent 29 years here in Tullahoma uh, building a successful program, and we're not a team, a successful program that has rules, right, has structure, has value. Right? And there's tradition here in Tullahoma. Uh, just because a new guy stands in his spot, hey, the tradition and the values, the structure and the character do not change. Uh, that standard is set. Our job now as, as a Tullahoma community, as a Tullahoma football staff, and one of my main jobs is to make sure that that standard and that bar continually gets raised. And we do more and more for our kids. Hey, throughout the year. And I look forward to being here for a long time. Mike, you're still the oldest one. Coach Matthews is the oldest one here. I did. <laughs> you know. hey, but I look real forward, look real forward to getting started. There's a lot of things that we have to get done, but I can't say enough. Thank you all so very much for being here. You don't know what it means to myself and my family. So uh, without anything else, hey, somebody get some cake. <laughs> caring look like? This is what caring looks like. This is setting an example for others. This is rising to the challenge. This is doing what works. This is doing my part. This is doing your, your part. part. Each of us individually. Acting as one. Keeping your distance no matter how awkward it may seem. This is wearing a mask. Over your nose and mouth like, like we, we are. are. Keeping our distance, each wearing masks. Not under your chin. Not above your head. Not in your hand. But over your nose and mouth. This is listening to the expert. If you'll just wear, wear one, one of, of these. these. Caring makes community. And, and this, this is, is what, what caring, caring looks, looks like. like. Until COVID-19 is no longer a threat. Until COVID-19 is no longer a threat. Until COVID-19 is no longer a threat. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, what you wear, how you dance, or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. I feel like we're safe at Park View. There's somebody on staff all the time. So if you need help, help us there. We are surrounded with people that are looking after us and, and taking care of us. The staff is wonderful and always available. We feel so safe and secure here. I feel safe at Parkview all the time. How long has it been since you raced a cheetah? Are your tornado creating skills getting rusty? Tired of being the only one in your neighborhood who hasn't built a dinosaur? Sounds like it's time to visit the Hands-On Science Center. The Hands-On Science Center is an indoor science playground. In this museum, please touch is the rule. Join us for weekly science demonstrations on space, lasers, lizards, rocks, and a whole lot more. No two visits are ever the same, so visit often to see our ever-changing exhibits and demonstrations. The Hands-On Science Center, 101 Mitchell Boulevard in Tullahoma. 
Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with News Leader on Channel 6, your local information network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and I'm glad to have our fire chief, Mr. Kenny Pearson, on the, on the show with us today because there's some questions that I wanted to ask him, and he's, he's uh, such a accommodation, oh, that's not even the right word. Uh, he, he decided he wanted to come see us from time to time, and we appreciate that, accommodating. He's accommodating of me and from you as well because you know, he can answer some questions that are on my mind. And with the snow, big snow, we had a big snow. We did have big snow. And we were, we were uh, in uh, golf shirts and short britches one day and yes, eight sir. inches of snow the next day. I guess it was eight to ten inches in some places. And in some places, yeah. I'm sure it was. So, uh, and it, and it kind of made me think. When I was a kid, you saw a fire truck when there was a fire. Pretty much the only time you saw a fire truck, when there was a fire. Yes, sir. Now, when ever something happens, you see more of a presence by our fire department. And I just wanted to ask the chief, what's the standard operating procedure on when your people get involved with a situation here in town? What, what are some of the reasons that you deploy? Well, we uh, have a vast uh, uh, majority of different calls that we, we go on. Uh, we have rope rescue teams, we have hazmat teams, uh, we have medical responders, we also have, we're all firefighters. So when we're, we get there, we're firefighters, that's our first job. Right. Uh, we also do a lot of mitigation things of that nature. So we have a lot of our, our public education, our different things that we do. Um, so if there is a fire, you will see mo all the fire trucks go into a fire. Uh, but we do have fast trucks that we use for medical calls. We do have hazmat response that we have a hazmat trailer and, and truck for. We also have a rope rescue team that will go out to the falls. We have a lot of different times that uh, people at the falls are lost or, or they've been injured and we'll go, out, go in and, and try to help them and mitigate the situation and get them out. Uh, this recent snow, we were very lucky that we didn't have a lot of trees down. Uh, a lot of times when that heavy snow gets on trees, right. those that are weak and they'll, they'll fall and things of that nature. Uh, they blew down during the last uh, now, storm. <laughs> yes, during the last <laughs> windstorm. Uh, so yeah. a lot of times when we have a, st a storm like that, uh, the fire department will go out and start checking quadrants. They'll also uh, work with uh, TUA and with our public works and try to mitigate the situation as fast as we can because when there is an emergency that rises, we need to get through those roads right. and get to where we need to go. So most of the time we'll go out and try to get at least one lane open in every direction that we can get to. And then once that's mitigated, then we'll back off and we'll get ready. So, for what, so what you're saying there, instead of, instead of waiting to have a call that uh, John Gray is, is, needs medical assistance on Autumn Lane, and you go out there and a tree's down and you have to saw the tree up before you can get to help John Gray on Autumn Lane, uh, you're, you're traveling around during these times looking for those situations and taking care of them before there's a call. Yes, sir. We and want when to, there's a call. We want to be able to get to you. You want to be able to get there. Yes, sir. And I mean, that's, out, that's outstanding. I didn't realize, I didn't realize y'all were so chainsaw friendly. We are very chainsaw <laughs> friendly and everybody at the fire department, uh, we, we keep them sharp, we get them ready to go, uh, or they're ready to deploy at any time. So we, we're ready to take care of and, and, and another thing, and of course, th this came to bear, I guess, maybe five, six or so years ago that the, that the fire department was getting to a lot of medical calls before 
the ambulance services were because you're closer and you're trained and so you're not only a first responder for fire in a lot of situations you're first responder for medical as yes, well sir. yes sir we do a lot of medical calls every year that uh, uh, we either get there at the same time as the ambulance, we get there before them, they get there before us sometimes. Yeah, uh, but, well, you know, me. it's not that. I don't yeah, want to, I'm, I'm not trying to say anybody's not doing their job. Right. If, it's, if it's on King's Lane and you're at Fire Hall number two and they're on the other side of town, it's just that it's you can be the, there quicker. We're going to get there quicker. Uh, but we are all uh, trained in medical response. So. Right. We're at least at Mercy Medical Responders. Uh, we have a lot of AEMTs, which are advanced EMTs. Uh, we have some regular EMTs. We also have a paramedic that's on our department as well. Uh, so we're trained at a very high level in a lot of areas. So we're able to do uh, some of the mitigation that needs to be done, uh, oxygen, right, right. IVs, things that right. are need needing for patients that we can possibly help and get them to definitive care at a quicker rate. So, uh, and and you were talking to me about the size of the vehicle. You know, instead of taking a fire truck with ladders and all of this stuff out on some of these things, you have smaller vehicles. We call them fast trucks. Fast. Uh, fast trucks. Okay. Uh, and a, we have a med one and a med two. Uh, there's one at each station, and we'll take those vehicles out uh, first if we have a medical call but if there is a second call that comes out the big truck will have to go out because we only have one fast okay train you made you before we came on the area we, we were talking about a lot of the reason is uh for that not only you don't need to bring that big vehicle out right but the bigger vehicles are uh more apt possibly to cause an incident uh, than a regular vehicle and you said and I think this is very interesting when when you have a call and the sirens are blaring and people are watching the first vehicle gets through down the road through the red light around the corner just fine and everybody sort of lets their guard down and the second vehicle through is usually the one who gets hit or caught there's a problem happens uh, because, yes, because people say oh well they're through they're through I don't have to worry about that anymore and pull out in the middle of the road and bang a lot of times that is that that is um, usually the second truck going through right. is the one that gets it because <laughs> we we just you know, as we we as people we kind of just let our guard down after that first right incident goes through and then that second one comes through and then that's when the problems usually right, happen. Right, right. Uh, so we do use the fast trucks uh, to help mitigate that situation without having multiple vehicles out, mm -hmm. especially on med units. Now, if we have any fire structure calls or if we have a uh, alarm at different buildings, we will send out all units. You're still firemen. Yes, we're still firemen. <laughs> we're still going to be there. One. Number one, we're going to be we're going to be taking You're care of that fighters. situation as much as we can. Uh, but we hope that our uh, public education uh, our working with codes and things of that nature and and, kids. and making people safer yeah. uh, I think we've done a really good job on that over the over the years uh, and we've you know mitigated some of that problems with people starting fires or having fires uh, by educating sure uh, sure the more education we get out there the more that these these younger younger generations understand about know things that they shouldn't do and and try and take care of their situation well and, and you made a statement before we went on the air that I think is quite interesting and and you know people will wonder well now here's a wreck out here these two cars hit out here and there's a car and a truck it might be a grain truck it might have a uh, uh, some kind of turf spray on the back of it well there's a fire truck out there what in the world's a fire truck doing out there spillage the spillage. A lot of times we we go out to accidents. Uh, using accidents with injuries, we're usually there to try to help uh, with the EMS and try to help with the medical. But our first job, of course, is to mitigate uh, hazards right. to the community. Uh, a lot of that is like oil spills, radiator spills. Uh, we will we'll use substances that will absorb that and help clean that area up. Because uh, 
uh, without washing without, it into without washing into the groundwater. We try to keep everything uh, above ground. Try not to get into our into our water system. Try to clean that up as best we can. Uh, also, problems that also exist after an accident is some of that oil and spillage. If it's not cleaned up, somebody else might wreck there. Yeah, right. Because it's slick, and they might hit that spot and you know, lose control of their vehicle. So we try to get that mitigated as best we can so that we can... Uh, and who cleans the glass up on the road? Uh, Y'all? We will help sweep, sweep it up, but most of, most of the time it is the uh, tow trucks, uh, the tow drivers. That's part of their... That's part of their, their deal. That when they pick up a vehicle, they clean up the, clean up the accident mess. area. Uh, a lot of times the firefighters are already sweeping it up for them to try to help mitigate the area right. as quickly as we possibly can so we can keep traffic going. Because a lot of times when people are backed up on traffic, we end up having other accidents uh, because of it. So we have to try to try to clear the roadway as quickly as we possibly can and get it open so people can move through. Well, this has been quite educational. Right. And I really do appreciate you coming by and spending time with us. And because that's what we want to do. We want, you know, we all we all forget about a whole lot of things until it till it happens and you're right in the middle of it and you're going wait a minute why is this what's going on here and that's what we want to do is just to get folks to kind of think about this stuff now i'm going to ask the one last question before i let you go seeing as how it was in the low 20s and snow just what does it take to crack open one of those fire hydrants and make a sled hill. Man doesn't get to do that anymore, does he? Let's, let's not do that. <laughs> let's, let's stay away from that. I guess when we were kids, I that, bet that might have happened. happened. <laughs> yes, sir. We'd go over to Irish Circle, and, uh, and uh, one of the, I forget who it was, lived over there. Uh, oh, it'll come to me. He was a highway patrolman. Lived over on Irish Circle. Oh. And uh, he'd he'd have a, he had a, he'd open that fire hydrant and let that little hill slick up slick up and the whole everybody in town would be over at Irish Circle and they used to do it at City Hall too that hill down City Hall some of the police or firemen would open that up to give kids a place to go and sled right. a safe place where there was light mm -hmm. and build a big fire and and it was it was a fun thing but. We don't get to do that. I know. Don't do that anymore. Too many rules we? now. Too many rules. Yes, sir. Kenny, thank you, thank buddy. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you, and I want you to have a happy, prosperous, and for the whole fire department, a very safe New Year. Thank you, sir. Stay well, my friend. We'll be right back after these messages. Clayton's has been Tullahoma Shoe Store for over 120 years, and Florence Hall continues that tradition today. We're the only shoe store in town that starts with measuring your foot to make sure you get the perfect fit in a quality shoe. That includes narrow through wide widths for men, women, and children. Clayton Shoes, the family shoe store you'll love. We're gonna make your style. We're gonna make your style. Service and quality at Clayton's Shoes. My husband was diagnosed with a spinal infection. He lost his ability to swallow and the movement of his legs. I couldn't turn over in bed, I couldn't walk, I couldn't eat. They were just wonderful in the treatment and care they gave my husband. I uh, regained my mobility where I was able to go home. It is miraculous. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. And that it's conversations with John and Pat, with John and Pat, 
with John and Pat. Hello everyone, I'm John Rickman. And I'm Pat Welch, and John, we're here today for segment 23. Hi. And Doug, I mean 23 is going to set us free. Yes, sir. I've got one uh, song that I wrote many years ago about being happy when you're singing. Many times in my life I've been down and out, but I never did stay down very long. When you feel myself slip into the valley of despair, I'm delivered on the wings of a song. When the worries of this world weigh on my shoulders, and it seems I'm falling on my face for sure, I sing it when I do my burdens lifted, cause there's nothing in this world a song won't cure. Sing, sing, sing when you're unhappy. Sing, sing, sing when you feel blue. Cause when you sing, sing, sing your voice like sunshine will part those gray skies and shine right through. That's the Reader's Digest condensed version. There's a little more to it, but I felt like the segment... I don't know we could take that much excitement if it went much further, John. Well, that was that, great. That, that, thank you, Pat. Yeah. But uh, we have some interesting topics today. Yeah, when, and we as, normally, as always. Right, and we normally have a, a somewhat of a, uh, maybe a stretched segue, but normally a segue in. I don't know if we got one today. Because we talked uh, before we came down here, we might do a little bit of discussion on what some people, and, and, and I would agree, is probably the best period of NCAA college football in, uh, in its history, and that would be the time following World War II. Because a tremendous amount of uh, veterans came back and still wanted to play. So rosters were dominated by people that were from 27, 26, 25 years old. Mr. Osteen, my principal, he said, I went to MTSU and I was 18 years old and I, I played football with people who'd killed other it's, folks. It's, uh, and it was a scary situation for him. That is, and I, I was going kind of from a local flavor, try to weave in uh, Coach W.C. Cooper, who was John Gray's coach, and uh, Coach Cooper coached from 56 season through the 66 season. He had been here 11 seasons, won a lot of games, and was a great coach. And uh, the school board, after when the stadium was was redone six years ago, had the field named after him, and the outside of the stadium is marks this, the field as W.C. Dub uh, Cooper Field. But he also was a really good player at UT. And uh, when he came, to, when he went to UT, uh, that would have been 47, I believe. Uh, the, the squad would have been, a majority had been veterans. And uh, he told me he came uh, as a 17-year-old freshman, and yet there were people on scholarship that basically were after his job, and he was after theirs, <laughs> that uh, one of which had fought in, on Iwo Jima, uh, in the, the Pacific battles, and this guy had been crawling at night, and pitch black, under the jungle, and his hand went through a decomposed body of a Japanese soldier. I know that's a little bit rough, but that emphasizes the, the, the struggles and the trials and so forth that a whole lot of these football players have been through. Football practice wasn't a whole, a whole lot t tougher. In fact, it wouldn't have been as tough right. as fighting for your life. And I said something to Coach Cooper one time in a visit. Uh, man, that just didn't seem fair that you had to be competing with somebody that had fought Japanese hand-to-hand -hand at uh, Iwo Jima. And he said, son, that's, you just had to understand the facts as you went in. And, uh, and he's exactly right. My father was the opposite way. He ended up not, thank goodness, didn't have to, was not involved in combat, but he was a, a, a naval fighter pilot. And he got his wings right before uh, President Truman ordered the bomb to be dropped in, uh, in Japan. And our government was prepared if, if this, that didn't work, to, to, uh, for an invasion of Japan that would have, they were planning on uh, possibly losing a million men 
and uh, his last orders were to go to San Diego to do a little bit more training on land, landing on flight decks, and from San Diego he was going straight to Japan. So that, you know, uh, some people would argue that uh, maybe we shouldn't have dropped the bomb, but I would argue that I may not be here if, they, if we <laughs> hadn't dropped the bomb. True. But back to uh, Philip, why don't you show my father's picture? Well, that, that's better. That's the roster. And I don't know if uh, everyone can see it, but the, it has uh, an extra line instead of the name, weight, uh, age, hometown, varsity letters, that kind of thing. One of the last lines on the right side is service. And the Alabama section there, I think I figured out one time about 65 percent of them had served in, the, in the World War II or during that period. and. Uh, um, that was in 48, so in 46 and 47, of course, even a higher percentage would have been involved in there. Now, why don't you show, um, there's my father's picture. That was his A-Day or the uh, Letterman's Club He's a good-looking gentleman. Oh, yeah. he, uh, and he kept his hair his whole life, too, John. I, I was always <laughs> jealous of his looks and his hair. Yeah, and then we'll show one of Coach Cooper. And this was the Coach Cooper picture was drawn out of a 1948, the, the 1948 Tennessee-Alabama game uh, program. And uh, Coach Cooper wasn't a bad looking in He was league. principal at West when I first came to Oklahoma. Right, right. Good gentleman. He went, uh, went back after he finished coaching and got a master's in administration and was a, did a great job administration yes. for, for the city schools. And then uh, what may be to me is really interesting is those two guys played against each other during this wartime. Mr. Coach Cooper came in as uh, kind of being the disadvantaged where he uh, first went to UT. He was the young guy. My father in during this 1948 Tennessee Alabama game was uh, 24 years old, I believe. But at the, in the Tennessee won that day, 21 either 21 to six or 21 to seven, and Coach Cooper threw a touchdown pass, and in the fourth quarter he ran for one, and he was voted Coach Nayland's Player of the Game of the week that that week for his efforts against uh, Alabama. And I've, I've got a tape of the whole game, but we Philip has pulled out two plays, the touchdown that Coach Cooper ran in the fourth quarter, which was the second score he was involved in, and the kickoff immediately following was returned by my father. So we got Coach Cooper and my father back to back and the, I was visiting one day and he pulled out a whole lot of uh, mementos he had and he had a Knoxville News Sentinel. There's the score of Coach Cooper. Take that Alabama. Yeah. I wish you wouldn't be so I wish you wouldn't I wish y'all wouldn't be Take so that, Jerry Mathis. Tim McGee <laughs> various ones. And then this kickoff was returned by my father. Two plays removed and I was mentioning the Knoxville News Sentinel at that time, and I can remember when I was first reading newspapers, the Nashville paper following the UT game would have a little chart on one page, and it had uh, uh, showed a cartoon character of, of uh, maybe Smokey the dog carrying a ball, and and a straight line was a run, a dotted line was a pass, and it just and it graphed as a kind of caricature every play of the game, and. Coach Cooper's paper from the Sunday following the third Saturday of uh, October 1948 had that, and he was looking at his name, and then he noticed right under his name the kickoff was turned by Welsh, spelled W-E-L-S-H like my family spells it, and he was just stunned. He said, that's got to be your father, hadn't it? And so I went back to Tate and found that it was it was back they, to back. They didn't know each other. They, uh, I, 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 he knew, that's amazing. Coach Cooper knew me and my brothers from playing with his twin boys. And so he knew who my father was, but I don't know, I don't know if he knew that he played at Alabama the until the connection, but I know they never met. And it really, when, when Coach Cooper figured that out, it really bothered him, you know, he, all that time and, and they could have really reminisced and had a great time. Tell, tell me what uh, John and your children said when uh, they noticed your, they saw a tape of your dad running a touchdown that, and he simply handed the ball to the referee. <laughs> My same, the that, umpire. that same year was the, 1948 was the first time Alabama and Auburn had played in something like 40 years and the state legislature in Alabama got to where they were, they were going to cut fundings off to both schools, force them to play and Alabama beat them 
that game was 55 to nothing. It was the most lopsided score of the rivalry. And my father scored the second and third touchdowns, and I've got tape of that. And one time we were watching it, and uh, my kids would have been like six, four, and two, maybe something like that. And one of them, when he saw it, my father scored on a pass, jogged in. He was way behind uh, secondary and, and uh, jogged in and handed the ball off and just jogged right off, all in the same motion, never never acted like he was just out for a morning romp. And uh, one of my kids said, Papa, why didn't you spike it? <laughs> Which at that time would have been the furthest from somebody's thought. You yeah. know. It's a, the the, the uh, exuberance following a, a good play is it's a little definitely different. has changed. It's a little different today. Today, isn't it? There's it a lot is. of well, Pat. This is great. And well, uh, I monopolized a little bit, no, the John. And I'm, you did I'm, well. I appreciate and, you. Well, you knew more about the subject today than anyone. Well, and, it was a uh, great time in in college football, and, and uh, a, a time and where it's really competitive. By the way, uh, Mr. Cooper took that single wing, which he, they ran at UT then, oh, yeah. and brought that to Tullahoma. And these boys, uh, now our age, my age, and oh, uh, the ones that play for uh, Coach Cooper. Ran that single wing just like back it, during just that like time. it, and that. And I, I was telling John Gray this morning that uh, when I watched the whole tape, it was, I felt like I was 10 years old, in 1964, watching their games because it was just exactly the same offense as what was on that tape. So that John, I think that wraps up uh, 20 segment 23, and but that's not the end of the stories. We've got more to come, unless unless P Head says we're out. Thanks. Talking history about this and that. It's conversations with John and Pat. With John and Pat. With John and Pat. I got a tour and I saw all the things and I was so excited about them. And she took me to the movie theater and it had red chairs. And this is a done deal <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> we have so many activities here that you just can't keep up with them all. We have exercise, we have coloring, we have crafts. It's uh, charming, it's attractive, it's very comfortable. It was one of the best decisions of my life. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. He's tough enough to feed the man that gave him a lifetime of nourishment. <clears throat> he has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up but without even flinching. That's right, no employee of the month bonus check here. This guy, no. This boy will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. Good luck finding a gym to train for that. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit Tullahoma and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. I was skeptical about getting the COVID-19 vaccine. There are a lot of opinions being shared. But I had the chance to talk with my doctor about my concerns. He told me the vaccines are backed by decades of research and that the vaccines are proven safe and effective. Now I'm protected and ready to put this pandemic behind us. Join the millions of Tennesseans who have decided to give COVID-19 vaccines a shot. Visit covid19.tn.gov to find an appointment today. 
Get your news first, fast, and free with your newsletter on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with Newsleader on Channel 6, your local information network. Thank you, camera lady and camera gentlemen, for putting a good, sharp picture on the screen. And thank you, John, for that introduction. Uh, it's a great day here, and uh, we always like to share some information. I'm so excited this morning because I've been uh, uh, referred to some history that I'd heard about for many, many years, but I finally seen it in black and white. And there's uh, uh, our friend Jim. She, Chick uh, gave me a book called Granada, or Grenada, whichever way you want to pronounce it, 2002. And one full page in there tells us about the uh, northeastern part of Mississippi. And there was a Choctaw Indian lady that lived up there, had a whole bunch of kids and uh, some land there, and um, a uh, fella. I don't remember his name that was the grandfather of, of these children and uh, they had a, quite a bit of land there on the reservation and, and they left to go elsewhere and immigrants came from Virginia and North Carolina and Georgia to this beautiful land there in northern Mississippi and uh, there was a fellow with the name of um, Humphrey I believe uh, that was the governor of Mississippi, and there was a, another fellow by the name of um, Plummer that was the only congressman from Mississippi. And the uh, settlers that came there uh, had two little settlements there, and um, one of them was kind of uh, spearheaded by the governor, and uh, who was an opponent to the congressman, and. Uh, the, the Congressman Plummer uh, had another little village there, and I think uh, one of them, the, uh, the governor named his little village Tullahoma for what reason and where he got the name, I do not know. And the other one evidently had some ties with Pittsburgh, the uh, congressman, and he named his little village uh, Pittsburgh, and it was only separated by a surveyor's <coughs> line. And uh, the, the, the street that separated these two little communities there uh, was called Lyon Street. One of them had uh, six homes, six grogs, whatever that is, and no churches. And uh, the other one, Pittsburgh, had, uh, I think, a church and two doctors and uh, four or five houses there and one, one business of some kind. And I believe... Pittsburgh, no, 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 Tullahoma had the, had the post office there. And these two groups of people that lived there uh, fought all the time. They were bitter enemies for whatever reason. There was a, a river that went, went by there and they didn't even use the same, <laughs> same boat or what do you call it, barge or ferry. Ferry is the word I'm looking for to get across the river. Each, each one of them had their own ferry just to get across the river. And uh, there was less than 100 people that lived in each community. Well, time went on and they kept fighting among themselves politically and otherwise. And finally they decided, well, let's get together. There's no need for us to keep on fighting. So uh, they decided, well, let's do get together and, and make one community of this. and. Uh, Somebody suggested, well, let's let's get together like it's a, a marriage. 
So they did. They performed the, uh, uh, a marriage, and some fella from Tullahoma represented the bride, or, or I guess it was a man that represented the bride, and another fella from Pittsburgh that represented the groom. And they had a, a Methodist minister that performed a ceremony there, joining Tullahoma and Pittsburgh. And they had a big celebration and a, a, um, a uh, reception, and they mended their their hate for each other, and they just almost avoided, uh, well, they did avoid bloodshed by just a narrow margin, but they got together and lived peacefully. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this was in 1836. They finally got together. Well, time went on, and they renamed their village because neither one of them wanted uh, the other one to have the name, and they renamed it Grenada or Granada. I think there was a Granada, Spain, and uh, there was an Isle of Granada, and they named that uh, Union of Tullahoma and Pittsburgh Granada, and they began to fight again, but later they mended their hateful ways and got together and uh, have been living peacefully ever since. Grenada at this time, has, according to the, the latest census, has about 23,000 residents there. They have much industry that uh, is not unlike that in Middle Tennessee. And some of those people that had lived in Tullahoma, uh, Mississippi, moved to Middle Tennessee and brought the name with them, uh, even though uh, I think Tullahoma had already established its name. They hadn't gotten their charter. Uh, till uh, 1852, but uh, that was the name that they brought with them, and uh, many of the uh, accommodations and uh, things of interest, recreation that were there are just exactly like they are now in Tullahoma. They've got youth uh, little league baseball. They've got uh, one of the finest bands in the country, like Tullahoma, Tennessee has, and uh, they've got lakes and fishing and uh, golf courses and uh, beautiful homes there, much like Tullahoma. There's one picture in the magazine that's really too small to show uh, on the air now, but uh, one side of the street there in Grenada looks almost like uh, West Lincoln Street in Tullahoma, Tennessee. But we're going to bring you some more. Uh, pictures and interest about how these places compare. And uh, remember now, this is not the end of the story because there's a whole lot more to come. And we're glad that you can watch and be a part of our program. You're a wonderful audience and you have a good day. Smoking tobacco accounts for three of every ten fire deaths in the United States. Tullahoma Fire Department, Tullahoma Fire Department, need you en route to a structure fire, 202 Main Street, heavy smoke showing, neighbors advise child trapped inside. Lighters, matches, and associated smoking paraphernalia are the leading cause of preschooler fire deaths. We as firefighters know that most structure fires can be prevented. I've got one! I've got one! Command, this is primary search. We have a victim. Need EMS to meet us at the front door. Please help us to give you a fighting chance. This can be prevented. Contact the Tullahoma Fire Department for a free home safety inspection. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip, and then, boom, adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. 
Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Folks, we're back, and Peggy, we've just about made it through this snow show. Yeah, the snow show. Instead of a no show, <laughs> this is a snow, snow show. show. God, and, it's and pretty out there, though, yeah, isn't it? it? It's just absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous. And, and I, we appreciate our snow people being I'm, with I'm us. I'm crazy today. about these snow people. I, uh -huh. I've got to thank my sister in law, Miss Candy, for that. <laughs> she's, she's, uh, she was the one who wrangled all these snow people down. She went on a vacation one year and found them. Well, up they're, in the snow they're country, cute as they can be. she made friends with them and brought them home. I love them. Yeah, me too. Hey, what uh, what we oh, need to remind you of, South Jackson, the, next right, week? Right, 14th, Friday night, Henry Cho. You know, he's a great guy. He, oh, he usually fills the house, so call and get your tickets right away. But uh, you can take your children to see Henry Cho. He's not a foul mouth. No, 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 person. no, no. He's, he's clean. He's clean. He does a really great job. And he job. usually has. A, he usually has. A, a, he brings a, a, another person another to person, open for yeah. him. That's a that uh, semi gospel type of a a player, but clean. It's clean. Yeah. It's family friendly. Family friendly stuff. So we got so, 26, 25 seconds. 25 seconds. We want to say. Alabama. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alabama and Georgia play football for the national championship oh, a week this coming from Monday. Monday. And the Titans won this weekend and are the top of the bunch, the top of the heat. Isn't that great? Yep, they're okay. great. So Tennessee's hey, looking everything's fine. good. Tennessee's <laughs> great. Peggy's great. I'm great. <laughs> Julia's great. And we're out of here. And happy Thank New you, year. folks. Be <laughs> safe out there and enjoy your 2022. It got to be better than 21. Ah. Next time. <laughs>